must be my front butt, right? What's your max bench? Such a bro question. We don't bench in strongman. So it's not very high. What's your max bench? I bet it was 315 in high school. froze. I almost read what that said. Hold on. There we go. What does it say? How did you get your traps? Well, I'm very trap dominant, so I get a trap pump even when I do legs, which is not exactly a good thing. A lot of uh, farmers, carries, holds, um, 
lot of shoulder work. I don't recommend being trap dominant because it's really hard to get them to calm down when you want them to. background, I guess it won't let me. sandbags for arm strength. I'd recommend sandbags for any type of strength um, because they work more than just your arms. Sandbags are kind of like an all around good tool. I mean there's only so much you can do with them but if you get creative it could be a, a full body workout. Also, depending on what kind of sandbag, if you want like a throwing sandbag or a carry type of sandbag, you can get both. And that'd be a good way to get a decent workout in. here at my house but I bought this off Amazon you can put a dumbbell in it and you can use it as a kettlebell option like so I don't smash my hand like so you can use it for kettlebell swings pressing you're kind of limited a little bit because the handle is so long, but I really like kettlebells, but they're really expensive. So I just opted for this handle because it was a cheaper option off Amazon. Especially if you want a variety of different weights. So you can find this on Amazon. I think some sporting goods stores have them too. Alright, where 
where was I? do some training split so I am doing uh, four days on three days off right now I do two lower body days and two upper body days I alternate um, I work third shift so I um, I kind of don't have like a set day that I do something it's based on when I have time um, because of my work schedule so like today is basically my day one. Um, so I'm doing upper body, which is going to be like some incline work, um, some strict pressing. Um, usually I do um, some sort of like axle work, whether it's like a floor press or a Z press. Today I'm going to do a flat bench bench press in place of um, a floor press. Just to kind of switch it up, I go back and forth. And then more than likely tomorrow, I'll do a squat day. So I do one, one lower body day is squats and one lower body day is deadlifts. I'm taking it easy right now because I'm just waiting to have knee surgery. So I'm not doing anything super crazy. I'm just trying to stay active until I have surgery. No, but I've had neck issues. I have a lot of like uh, through here, like my the side of my neck into my trap a little bit. Um, I have a lot of just neck and trap issues from a lot of strict pressing over the years. And then that kind of follows over into my bench. I'm going to go get a coffee refill. I'll be right back. Since I work third shift, I drink coffee during my workouts because that's my morning time. So if you're wondering why I'm drinking coffee at night, third shift life.
post situation, post, post workout situation. Um, usually just regular food. Um, when I first started working out, I was really big into like all the supplements and stuff. Um, but the longer I've been working out, the more I just prefer real food. So I usually post workout, I'll, um, eat some sort of protein, which is usually eggs, um, egg whites. I'll do like one and a half to two cups of egg whites and two cup or and two whole eggs. And then I'll get carbs of some sort, usually like a bagel or, um, well, like the Ezekiel bread, something like that, or, um, cream of wheat. So I'll make sure that I have a substantial amount of carbs mixed with a substantial amount of protein. And that's usually like my meal one. Um, I, I don't really like label it as breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's usually meal one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> it's easier for me that way to keep it all straight since I do work third shift versus saying my breakfast is at night and my dinner is in the morning. So yeah, I work out fasted most of the time. On the days that I have to work, I will work out and then I'll eat. I have a lot of issues bulking, small stomach, gotta stretch it. <laughs> um, depending on what you like really want to do, like what your main goal is, if you're not afraid of getting big, like fat, or adding some fat onto your body, um, basically eat until you're almost miserable for a, for a few, you know, a week or two weeks, just, um, to give your stomach a little bit of a chance to stretch out and accommodate large meals. The first few days is usually the worst, but once your, your body gets used to it, it's not so bad. I eat so much now that my body is used to it. But in the beginning, like I eat like 3,400 calories a day, roughly when I was like around like the 23 to 2600 calorie range, increasing to the 3000 was a lot for me. And it took me a while to get used to it. But if you just give it a few days, usually that helps. <laughs> yeah. Protein farts. Uh, broccoli is usually the worst too. <laughs> Slow increase. I'll add, don't get, uh, don't add too much too fast. <laughs> I was responding to my best friend. She sent me a message. Should I work out my core on off days? You can. Uh, there's nothing wrong with working your core on off days. Um, usually, depending on the type of lifts that you do, like um, if you are more of like a weight lifter, you know, you go in and you have like your larger lift days, like your squat day, your bench day, things like that. Usually the bigger lift days work your core and then added core work is just kind of like an accessory um, because you should always work on your bracing, like when you're benching and deadlifting and stuff. So when you brace, that's working your core and your lower back. So that way it's strong all around. It's not going to hurt to work your core on off days. I don't personally but you can.
So today, basically everything I'm doing is to accommodate or to be an accessory to my larger lift, which is going to be my strip pressing. Um, I'm going to be log strip pressing. So strongman, we do a lot with the log. So all of my beginning accessories, like the incline, um, the dumbbell bench, um, incline push-ups is all to accommodate and warm up for the log strip press that I'm going to be doing in just a little bit. I'm not going to deadlift today. I deadlifted two days ago. It's usually my last day of the week um, or my last workout day of the week is usually when I deadlift. So I'll do um, log today, upper body. Um, then I'll do squats and then I'll do upper body again. And then the very last workout day of the week, I will do deadlifts. The only music I can find that won't copyright me. It's a yoke. It's not a squat rack. So if I tilt you up, that up there is the yoke bar that you put on your back. I have it way to the top so I can use the bottom half for squatting and stuff. So that's why it's wobbly. I, uh, the yoke is from Titan. Ooh, my camera went all funky. The um, yoke is from Titan, and so they actually sell a bunch of attachments that you can convert your yoke into a squat rack and stuff. So it worked out pretty well in my favor since this is my master bedroom. 
so I'm not like in a garage or anything. <laughs> so it's the tallest room in my house. So I used it for my gym. years. Um, I was a bodybuilder first. I did two shows and I wanted to get bigger. Like I wanted to put some size on me. And so I was like trying to look for, um, I guess the most efficient way, which kind of backfired on me. But five years ago, I didn't know really a whole lot. So I was just kind of looking for something fun to switch it up. So I went to strongman and I haven't really gone back. I'd like to go back to bodybuilding, but I keep having knee surgery, so it's kind of putting a damper on all things bodybuilding. PRP for me. Uh, maybe someday. We'll see. I'm supposed to have another surgery. I haven't scheduled it yet, but I'm going to try and schedule it for the end of summer. I just don't have enough time saved up at work at the moment. just got these knee sleeves. How much do all your equipment cost you think? Oh geez. Um, with what I have so far and the stuff you can't see that's like tucked in the corner or down in my basement, probably like 
$2,500 or $3,000, give or take. Um, I've kind of acquired it over the last few years, so I don't really know an exact amount, but like the yoke was like $500, the log was $400, um, my barbell was $300, the axle bar was maybe like $100. Um, it actually might be closer to like $4,000 actually. Um, I have a concept ERG bike over here in the corner. That was $1,000. Um, my bumper plates were like $300. Thankfully, I didn't have to buy all of it at once. Um, when I moved into this house, I had a couple of my friends um, donate me some money to go towards my uh, dumbbells because I got... Um, I got divorced last year, and when I moved here, I didn't have any dumbbells. So a couple friends of mine donated some cash so that I could get some dumbbells. I got my stuff from Bells of Steel. I've heard good things about them. I personally have never bought anything from them, but I've heard really good things. Oh, okay, you're from Canada? Fine. I've been to Canada twice. Once. Once for sure. I went into Canada and went to McDonald's. And I was 18. My brother-in-law and I went, we were in Michigan, and we went across the bridge into Canada, and... We were going to go to the strip club because we heard that I could get into a strip club at 18, but they were closed. So we went to McDonald's instead and then went home. <laughs> so that was my trip to Canada. <laughs> we are going to see some cars here. <laughs> I think, feel like that would probably be a more efficient way. And especially with gas prices right now, I don't blame you. I'm about ready to get a horse myself. Very weird question.
so basically until I have my knee surgery. I, uh, I've been doing lighter weight and higher rep, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's kicking my butt, that's for sure. I'm not used to it. I'm used to lower reps, so it's taking a little time getting used to it. Do you need wrist straps? Um, like these that I'm wearing, I don't need them, but I like them. It kind of gives me an extra, um, I don't know, like oomph, I guess. I'm not really sure, especially with like the higher rep, because since I am training, I don't, I don't want to fail at training. I would like to be able to hit all the reps that I can. So it just kind of works out. And then in uh, competition, I wear them, obviously, because usually it's heavier weight. So you want to make sure that you don't screw up your wrists over something silly when you're just trying to hit the weight that you want to. And especially in strongman, as long as the rules allow you to have whatever you want, like wrist straps or straps for deadlifting, um, a belt, a grip shirt, things like that, you might as well use them. Because everybody else is going to use them. And if you're not, then it kind of just puts you at a disadvantage. The log itself is 73 pounds because this is a female log, so it's a 10 inch. Um, the men's is like 12 inch, I believe. It's a little bit heavier, but empty, this is 73. I have 10 pounds on there, so we're at like 85 with the clips. Like I said, I'm just going for reps. Um, I'm hitting three sets of eight for now. I will go up and wait here soon after this set. How many strong strongman competitions per year? It varies. Um, so I've been doing strongman for five years. This is my fifth year. And I've had three knee surgeries within that four and a half, five years. So it varies depending on when I had knee surgery and how bad uh, my injury is. So, um, this year, this year I've competed in three, um, one in March and two in April. Um, last year I didn't compete in any cause I had surgery. Uh, I had surgery in March and so I took the whole year off. I actually never planned on coming back to strongman. So, um, the fact that I'm doing strongman again is kind of, uh, whoops, didn't intend on doing it, but usually it's between like two and three. I pick my competitions based on if I'm gonna get a nationals invite or not. <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe in like a foot race, <laughs> but obviously not weight. 
he's like a super heavyweight and I'm a lightweight. So my weight class is 140 and below, <laughs> not 400 pounds and above. <laughs> My, uh, my boyfriend is a super heavyweight, so it's interesting. Oh, I ran out of music. Looks like we're going to have to start it over. All right, I have one more set, and then we're going to go up just a little bit and wait. I'm doing small jumps because the reps are moderate. Shoulders are already burning. I got one single set of five.
All right, I'm gonna hit this last set, and then I need to go shower so I can get ready for work. This is one set of three, and this is uh, 95. folks. All right, I gotta go run, shower quick, and uh, get ready for work. So I will catch you guys possibly tomorrow, but I will catch you this week for sure. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, I'll see you guys later.